Okay, so today we're going to go over some tips and tricks to make you a better sniper in Battlefield 1. The Scout class has some really powerful assets that you can utilize to help out your team, and there are some fundamental skills that I think you need to know that will help you stay alive, keep dropping enemies, and playing the objective. That's what this game is all about. Now these are just some of my tips, it's not like one size fits all or anything. There are lots of different ways to play as a sniper in Battlefield 1, but these tips are what really work for me. The first thing you need to consider, and it sounds silly, is the weapon that you're going to be using. Battlefield 1 features a new mechanic that affects most of the bolt action rifles, and that is the sweet spot. This is a range at which the bullets you fire will do more damage, pushing up to 100 maximum. That's a one-shot kill to the chest or the head. That sweet spot range can be used to dictate what range you're really going to be operating at as a scout. Taking advantage of that 100 damage and dropping people with a one-shot is going to help you clear areas much faster. Now, the Martini Henry and the SMLE Mark III are your close to medium range options. The Russian 1895 follows that, and then the Gewehr 98 and the Springfield sit out at a longer range. Now, you could pick any rifle that you like, providing that you use it at the correct range to get those one-shot kills most of the time. But there's something else that you really should be considering. Scout rifles using certain scopes can give off a scope glint. Now, if you're using the longer range rifles like the Gewehr 98 and the Springfield, and you're looking to use the sweet spot to do maximum damage, chances are you'll want to use a higher powered scope so you can see what you're shooting at, something like a six or eight time zoom. But those scopes give off a glint and they will give away your position. If you're looking to keep the advantage of the gunfight on your side, then simply use a scope that has a four times magnification or less. Pick the marksman variant of the bolt action rifles and you'll stop emitting that bright white light right across the battlefield. With a lower powered scope, you'll wanna pick a rifle with a sweet spot though that suits that range, a little bit closer to home, sort of close to medium range combat. So most of the time, I go with the SMLE Mark III. If you decide to stick with a certain magnification, say it's a four times or three times zoom, make sure you commit to it. If you start messing around with the magnification, the muscle memory you've built up with your mouse or thumbsticks on your controller will almost count for nothing. You'll have a harder time hitting targets, you probably won't end up landing the shots that you might have landed if you stuck with the magnification that you always use. Muscle memory takes a little bit of time to build up, so find something you're comfortable with and then stick with it. Once you've got your primary all sorted out, we of course need to quickly look at what sidearm you're going to take, and that's really all about preference. It's what you're really comfortable using. There are some high damaging ones like the Mars Auto, which will come in handy if you want to follow up a shot with your pistol and finish somebody off. It will kill them pretty much in one shot if you've already hit them with a rifle bullet. Or there's faster firing options like the From a Stop, which might get you out of a sticky situation in close quarters when your rifle really isn't designed to help you. I personally really like the M1911. I use it with pretty much any class in the game. It's reliable, hard hitting, and has plenty of rounds in the magazine to finish off players who might get a little bit too close. And then of course we've got the gadgets, and in my opinion there are really only two that you really need to pay attention to. The first one, spotting flare gun, you have to equip that, it's just an absolute must. It lights up the minimap with enemy locations within its radius, not just for you, but for your entire team as well. You have two of them to fire, so get them out around objectives if you're trying to take one, or get them in areas that you think enemies might be hauled up in. For example, the bunkers on Mont Grappa and Empire's Edge can really be helpful for your teammates if you fire a flare gun in there because their minimap will just light up like a Christmas tree. And the second gadget is of course the K-Bullet. That thing is extremely powerful, not necessarily just for taking out vehicles, but for annoying them. That's where I find it's most effective. If a vehicle is low on health, chances are it's going to retreat and try to self-repair. 
if you can hit that vehicle with a K bullet whilst it's trying to repair, it will reset the repair cycle. And that can be anywhere between 5 and 7 seconds for them to get some health back. If you fire all 5 of your K bullets, you will essentially stop them from repairing. And then if you've spotted that vehicle up, it's going to be on the minimap, and you know there's going to be an assault player running in from somewhere to try and take it out. It's more of a nuisance than for actually taking out vehicles, but I can find it to be very effective in the right situation. Right then, that's your loadout sorted. Now let's move on to some gameplay tips. These are little tips and tricks that I've picked up on over the years in Battlefield games, and most of them apply directly to Battlefield 1. One of the most important things you need to remember when playing the Scout and being that sniper is always staying on the move. Battlefield 1 has a lot of players using the Scout class and chances are there is somebody always looking out for you or they're already looking at you. To make their life a little bit harder, just move around a little bit. Move left, move right, forwards or backwards. It doesn't need to be erratic but moving around enough will make sure that enemies don't lock onto you and end up killing you. Try and keep the movement nice and random as well. There's no point strafing left to right in the same pattern all of the time. The enemy that's aiming at you is going to work out that rhythm very fast and you'll have your head blown off before you even know it. Movement around cover is also very important as well. Lots of players that I kill use the peek over cover feature that's built into Battlefield 1. Now that's fine if the person aiming at you isn't a great shot, but popping in and out of cover at the same point really isn't ideal. It's very easy to predict where you'll stick your head out again. Take a step back from the cover and use crouch to standing as your movement. That way you can move left and right behind cover, pop up, take a look, drop back down and reposition manually. That makes you a much harder target to hit and can even give you the element of surprise popping out of cover where your enemy doesn't expect you to. Next tip I have is to minimise the amount of time that you spend scoped in. Whatever the magnification is of the scope that you're using, your whole screen will zoom in to that magnification, meaning you lose so much vision of what's going on around you. If you spend more time out of zoom, looking for movement first of all, and then scope in, once you've picked out a target, you'll have much more success. If you spend too much time looking down your scope, you will lose awareness of what's going on around you. There are closer dangers that could become a threat, and more often than not, you will get yourself caught out. The classic is laying prone on a rock and somebody coming along and just getting a melee kill on you. You can avoid that by being on the move, spending more time looking around without being scoped in. You get a much wider view of the battlefield and you will find it much easier to pick out targets. Another tip you might find useful is crosshair placement. Now I've taught myself to use the crosshairs of the weapon to scope in on targets much more effectively. If you can line up the centre of your crosshairs approximately with the target that you're looking to kill, when you scope in, 9 times out of 10, you can be confident that the target will then be in your scope. That means less movement when you're scoped in, a quicker shot can be pulled off, and hopefully you hit your target. This doesn't just apply to bolt-action rifles, this applies to all weapons in the game. Keep your crosshairs up at chest height on the player, centre of mass, and when you aim down the sights, you'll find your target is usually much closer and you won't need to move your aim around half as much. And lastly, something that doesn't hugely apply in Battlefield 1 as much as it did in previous games, but still a relevant topic I think, bullet drop. Most of the bolt action rifles in Battlefield 1 have extremely fast bullet velocities and will hit the target very, very fast. But at some ranges, the bullet will drop a little bit and it will drag as well. The bullet will slow down. Now, you might be tempted to use the zeroing function, but personally, I'd recommend staying away from that and simply learning how to calculate the bullet drop. Stick with the same magnification scope so you're always aiming in the same way and just remember to aim a little bit higher at those longer range targets. A shot to the head is always a one-hit kill in Battlefield 1, so aiming just above a target at longer range should almost guarantee you the points. 
And there you go, that's my set of sniping tips for Battlefield 1. It's all about picking out targets, taking them out, and then using the Scout Class gadgets to assist your team wherever you can. Let me know some of your tips down below, it'd be nice to know if you do things differently to me, and whilst you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.